Drag is the force of resistance pulling an airfoil in the opposite direction of its motion. Drag is always going to be present in flight. It's kind of the same as putting your hand out the window of a car while driving. That feeling of the wind pushing your hand in the opposite direction the car is moving is drag. The faster we go, the more drag we'll have. Since you're already familiar with the formula for lift, I'll just go ahead and give you the formula for drag right away. Drag equals the coefficient of drag times half times rho times velocity squared times surface area. It looks just like the formula for lift, with the only difference being the coefficient of drag. This means if any of the above variables are changed, drag will change accordingly. Drag is a direct byproduct of lift. Whenever lift is created, drag will follow along. Drag acts parallel to the relative wind. There are three main types of drag. Parasite drag, induced drag, and profile drag, which consists of form drag and skin friction. Let's talk about each one in detail. Any component not providing lift experiences parasite drag by velocity squared. The effect of parasite drag is increased with the square of the airspeed. Doubling the airspeed increases parasite drag four times. Items which may be included on the parasite drag could be the fuselage, landing gear, or the tail boom. Since parasite drag varies with velocity squared, it's essential to keep it at a minimum. This means shaping every single component of the aircraft as aerodynamically as possible. By shaping components such as the fuselage, skids, wheels, antennas as aerodynamically clean as possible, less engine power is wasted in this part of the aircraft's total drag. Made up of form drag and skin friction, profile drag is the resistance of the rotor blades going through the air due to the texture of the blades as well as their shape. Form drag is the resistance caused by the air interacting with the frontal and rear areas of the rotor blades. A flat plate would experience more form drag than an airfoil would. Skin friction takes into consideration the slowdown of the airfoil in close proximity to the skin of the rotor blades, the boundary layer. There are two types of boundary layers, the laminar boundary layer and the turbulent boundary layer. The laminar boundary layer consists of very thin layers of air molecules sliding over each other. It's normally pretty thin and produces little skin friction drag. It's very sensitive, which means the tiniest disturbance can cause it to separate from the airfoil. The turbulent boundary layer consists of revolting and disturbed air molecules. It's much thicker than the laminar boundary layer and produces a lot more skin friction drag. The point where the laminar boundary layer changes into turbulent boundary layer is called the transition point. The separation point is where the turbulent boundary layer thickens and separates from the airfoil. Three main factors determine the amount of skin friction. Surface roughness, shape of the airfoil, and airspeed. Induced drag is an aerodynamic force that occurs whenever a moving object redirects the air coming at it. Induced drag increases as angle of attack is increased and vice versa. It's inversely proportional to the square of the airspeed. If speed is decreased by half, induced drag increases by 4. It's a major contributor to performance issues in a hover. Induced drag is caused mainly by wingtip vortices. Methods to reduce induced drag include washout and wingtip design or taper. Washout reduces the angle of incidence from root to tip, thereby reducing the potential angle of attack which causes wingtip vortices. With blade tapering, the blade's surface becomes larger from tip to root, providing a more evenly distributed lift production along the span of the rotor blade. Putting all this together, we can make up a hierarchy of what makes up total drag. The sum of all the types of drag yields total drag. To visualize how the different types of drag affects us in flight, we can take a look at the drag curve. The x-axis represents airspeed, and the y-axis represents the amount of drag. Let's start by taking a look at what parasite drag looks like on the drag curve. Parasite drag actually starts off at a very low value at low airspeed, and then exponentially increases with airspeed. The faster you go, the more parasite drag is going to want to hold you back. Profile drag stays pretty consistent throughout, although it has a slight increase with airspeed. Induced drag will be at its highest at lower airspeeds, and will tend to decrease rapidly with airspeed. Remember, induced drag is increased with any increase in angle of attack. Since we have a high angle of attack in a hover, we can expect plenty of induced drag. The lowest point of the total drag curve shows the airspeed at which drag is minimized. 
This is the point where the aircraft can be considered to be the most efficient and is referred to as LD max. It's where the lift to drag ratio is the most efficient. This is very important for helicopter performance and pilots use this knowledge every day to stay safe.